Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm getting ready to make a stained glass piece, but I don't know. I may have filmed this process before. Um, I created this pattern because I made one for Fran, and um, I decided to try it again. I'm going to use reds this time, pink, red, and clear glass. And the first part of the process is to cut the pattern out. So I've numbered everything. I made a copy. So I made the pattern. Oh, I have a hair. I don't know. I made the pattern, numbered all the pieces, and made a copy of the pattern. Then I'm going to cut this out, the pattern, and glue it to the different pieces. I have a hair somewhere to the different pieces of glass I have here. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm gonna go grab um, this piece that I did. This is a bit smaller, but it's pretty much, this is what I have in mind. Something along these lines, um, but just bigger. So I'm gonna use red, pink, and clear glass. Um, I have a couple different, so basically when I get glass, you wanna um, save the scraps. So this is, oops, still wet, cause I rinsed some of it off. And then we were eating dinner and I forgot I left it in the sink. Anywho, this is um, a certain, so actually it has a little waviness to this side and when you cut the glass that be, that factors in because you want to make sure you're cutting on the flat side of the glass and I'm pretty sure these pieces here are all parts of the same piece but I mean it's been a while since I um, have done a glass piece so this doesn't actually this does not look like the same glass and like you might not be able to tell on camera but I can tell all right so I gathered that oh see I have this is wet then this is a piece of pink that I got I'm pretty sure I got this at Hobby Lobby and it's two-sided but this side seems a little more groovy and this is way flatter so I would cut the glass on this side but I wouldn't necessarily display it I might display this side. So this might be the side that shows that's on the front of the piece. So there's something to that when you're deciding that because um, I'd have to flip the pattern over depending on what side of the glass I want to show, right? So this is a really pretty piece. This has actually some yellow and some orange. Let me see if putting, I don't know if you can see that little swirl with it, but it, it, there is some yellow-ish orange in it too. There's some yellow here. It's different. It's different than this piece for sure. Um, but I think those are going to be the main colors. And then there's other scrap. This I think is the same. It has a little bit of a bump. Um, then these are other scraps. But like if I can fit, this is a little, this is totally different, so I might not use it, but why not? I don't know. I like to at least have two of the same type of glass. But if I can use it in a small place and make two of them, right, like this number five and number 27, maybe I can do that, you know? I think I can. So I can use that. I just like to have at least two pieces. This is all the same because I can feel the bumpies. So then I have clear. I'll pull this over into the shot. It's just easier. This one has ri ripples. Um, this has got like some AB running through it. So it has some pink and purple little and green and blue. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, and same thing with this. So I'm not sure. Because they're scrapped, I can tell that this has a different, this it's definitely a different coating. Anyway, so I've already stacked up similar glass with similar glass. And then the final piece I want to, maybe I'll add this in too, is this piece, which it isn't transparent, 
but it's got this AB coating on it. It's just gorgeous. So it's kind of white with little pink through it. So this side, but then on this side, it has this AB coating. And I just love, oh, it's reflecting on my roof, on my ceiling in here, okay? So that's what I've gathered. But before, so I just wanted to kind of bring that up and rinse it off a little bit. But I'm going to cut this out. And to do that, you want, I have these special scissors. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's a piece of um, foil, copper foil in between, which doesn't really matter. Um, there's two blades on the bottom and one blade on the top. So the top blade, all it does is it makes the cut a little wider than your standard scissors. So basically, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do first is just cut this out as best I can along the edges because that that's not really uh, important. And I did the pattern on graph paper, so I um, can measure things out that way. I can count the little blocks and make sure everything lines up. And, you know, I, um, I like stained glass. It's not as precise as quilting but you really do, it's like a puzzle. You have to be able to put the pieces back in such a way that you don't have too many big gaps um, or it's gonna look a mess. So you wanna make your cuts as precise as you can. So this is scrap, I do not need these. But all the rest of the pieces are parts of my pattern. And I'm gonna use a glue stick and I'm just gonna use this Yoo-hoo stick. So let's start with, okay, so all of these pieces are going to be clear. All right, and then all of these I'm going to put, now I've already written, so I wrote red, red, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of red for sure. Because see on this one, I put a pink, 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 three, and then two clears. So this, and then there's a couple different versions of red. You can tell one, two, three, and then I think the rest of them are the other kind of red. So that's kind of where I'm headed with this piece as well. Um, you can tell that the heart is off center, so I moved it over so that it would be a little bit um, more artsy, you know. But I'm gonna cut out the heart. So let's just go around and I'm going to use the top blade of the scissor to show me where to cut. Now I want to show you if I put this down I'm going to try to come in on that. Look at that. You can tell that there is a gap that I've created a gap with these scissors so it, the paper doesn't butt right up against it because when we connect the glass together, it's gonna need some room for the tape, for the copper foil tape that I put on. And so that's the idea anyway. So I'll do it in bits and pieces. I'm, I'm wondering if I, I might take you down to the basement to show you the process. Okay, so that I just dropped, but this is an important piece because this I need to use for a piece of glass. So I'm going to find a piece of white. One of these pieces, it's going to have to be a pretty big piece. And because it's scraps, you just keep turning it and make and see if I can fit it. So that one's too small. Too small. I have a big one right here that I think I might use. So that's the bumpy side, this is the flat side. So I'm going to cut it on this side, the flat side, but I want this to show forward. So it's going to go like this. I think I'll do it like this, but I got to glue it like this. 
and then I'll cut it like that and then it'll be ready to put here but because you, I, if I turned it over this is the side I want to show anyway I hope I'm not confusing you but you need to make sure that the front of the glass faces the front of this so I have to glue it on like this and then I could probably put a couple of these on here as well so I'll have one two three but then I, I need another big piece for here so let me see if I have another piece big enough for here so I'm going to cut this out these scissors are a little take a little bit of practice because there's like a piece of, it takes a piece of paper say that little piece of paper that gets stuck in there but sometimes they're a little um, So I just finish the cut and then the scissors, you can't rip it out of the paper. You have to let the paper, let the scissors finish cutting. All right, so then I need this piece. So it looks like I'm not going to have a big enough piece of a different kind of glass. I have tons downstairs, though, I might have to go get. Actually, this smaller piece might fit over here. Nope. I do think, however, that I could put, that they could both be the same. I, I think I could make both of those fit on this piece of glass, but I have lots of other clear glass downstairs. I just thought I was going to be able to use my scraps. So see, I might, I'd be able to use this, I think. But um, for right now, See, look, this is the sample I was showing you. See how this is different, different. I think all four of those are the same. This is the front. So this is different than this. I like having all different pieces of glass if I can. So I am going to cut out some more of the pattern. All right, you know what? I'll just do it right here because I'm going to do, I'll do a piece. I'm going to go down, right down the middle. And the reason you make a copy is because then you put the puzzle back together. So once I cut this apart, I won't know where anything goes. So that's why you need a... I thought my phone was ringing, sorry. You need a guide a guide to you know follow all right so let's see kind of boring huh but this is the process so whoops I don't really want to okay I like to finish my cut and as long as the cut, I, you know, it'll match up. These pieces will match up no matter what, even if I'm not exactly on the line or whatever. I just have to do my best to cut the glass in the same way. All right, so let's see. Let's put it back together a little bit. All right. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I'm just putting it on top of here. And then I'm going to set this aside. And this piece I figured I wanted to do red. And I have all these scraps and this piece. These two pieces I definitely wanted to see. But it doesn't look like... Hi, Kirby. She tickled my foot. My little doggy. This piece looks red or like really red, but I think these are all from the same. This is definitely not from the same piece of glass. So I'm going to save that one and this one. These are both, but I don't know that I won't have one small enough. Maybe this number 12. I think I might be able to use that. I think I can. Um... So I'm going to cut this apart. I 
and then I'm, all you would do is glue it with a glue stick onto there, 15 goes down here. So when I, well when I did this pattern, I wrote red and on a few different things. See, I wrote red, 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 red. Because I wanted to see, I wanted to just make sure it felt spaced out in the correct way. But if I do that little one with the red right here, then these two will be touching, which is fine. I don't mind because I, I do want to add a bit more red. I don't have very, but it was going to be like, hmm. All right, I think I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to get a few of these. So basically, all right, let's take this. Why not? I'm going to take this little number 12 because it's the smallest one. And if I want to use it, my bird is calling me. Um, this is it. If I want to use it for this, I would glue it like this. And it's going to fit. I want to push it to one side and then I would still have to cut a little bit of it, but I have a grinder. So this will be fine to cut, but that I might just grind it, but I think I would try to cut it. I don't really have, know which side's the sh sh the straightest, but I think I'm going to glue this. I'll glue it on so I can show you what I mean. So you just take your glue stick. I'm going to glue them to the front of them for the most part. I want to try to, but for this one, I want, to, I want it to show on the front. I'm just pushing it up against the side, and I'll grind this side straight, but this side I'll try to cut, and I'll be able to nip it off. So that one is ready to go. So... That's basically what I'm going to be doing. It's pretty tedious and time consuming. So I'll go away and when I come back I'll show you the next part, part of the process which would be cutting the glass. And I'll probably take you downstairs and show you how I cut a few pieces and then I'll sh take you to the grinder and I'll show you how I grind them and then how we... So each step of the way I'll show you but I won't do too many. Keep this short and sweet but I think it's going to be pretty. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so this is what I tend to do. All right, so I've done these five pieces so far. So this little piece, this number nine, this is just what I've been gluing, goes over here. And I glued it right up against the edge, and then I'll just have to cut. I'll probably go here first. I'll show you. I'll go downstairs, and I'll cut that out. But see how I kind of, and this is, you know, this will get cut here. But that's the top, so I need the paper to be in the appropriate way that I'm, I'm going to do. So this is how it looks so far, and I kind of want to do this number 5, I think, and maybe this 17. So I'm still trying to use scraps, but I think the 17 I'll put on here um, because I'm, not, I'm trying to use glass that like this and this are the same. They both have those ridges. This and this are the same and so I'll do this and what did I say? 17 out of here. So that's just how my um, process works when it comes to doing this. I, I don't think you have to at all. I don't think you have to space your glass out like that. Um, nobody really taught me how to do it in any way like, you know, that. It's just kind of maybe 
I guess that's how I would do my art journal too or I just like that your eye gets to travel around the piece whoops <laughs> 16 Kiwi you're riled up she was peeping so much I had to go get her um, I ended up putting both of these on the same piece of glass so these will be at the bottom and then I'll use the same piece that goes across the top too and then I'm gonna definitely fill in with one or two pieces of white because I really like how that looks and this is a bigger heart so it'll even look more cool but I'm gonna put what did I say that 17 on here and again I want to put it in such a way that it's like easiest to cut so I'm going to glue the bottom of this. That's, that's the only tricky part is figuring out which side to put the glue on. And I already messed up one piece and had to like wipe the glue off the other side. But this I'm going to put right next to this on the straight edge if I can. I can push it all the way up. So that just saves me and then I'll grind it but it saves me having to cut two of the edges so I'll just go right down the side cut them both off oopsie and it moved I have my glue is on kind of thick so I was able to slide it which stinks alright now this is the way I was taught when I went to a class at a, at a craft store but there are probably millions of ways I know people make templates and they use a sharpie and they just draw on the on the glass as well but this is a, an easy way that I was taught so but I was saying nobody really taught me how to choose where the glass goes so the 9 is going to go there and then the 17 will go there and I think I need this 5 too so I think I'm going to do a 5 on that same piece and then I'll go cut these out I'll show you how I do that my basement is a mess. I don't know if... What are you doing, little bird? So I want this number five. She's spurrowing in my hair. And the four goes over there. All right, so I'm gonna put this five on the same glass. So it'll be here, here, here. And that's kind of how I go about mm, deciding where I want things. Um, so it's going to go like that. I think I might put this right here and then I can just cut that corner off because I try to save glass too as best I can. Like not make, <clears throat> not make too much scrap in other words, right? So I want to, I don't want to put this right in the middle of the glass and then cut it all apart just to get this little piece out. So I'm going to put it right here and then this does seem like it has a little bump to it but I think we'll be fine it's fairly flat and then I'll just be able to go and so that'll be this a whole this whole piece will still be intact when I'm finished cutting this glass so I'm gonna stop here for now actually you know what I can still do is these this this 19 I need Ooh, I didn't put a 29 on here why is there no 29 um but I need that one two three and then this number one so those will be the white glass that's going to be going around the outside edge. Um, I'm using this for the bottom, but I don't think I need to, I don't like matching it up. Although this is another big piece of that that I could use. And then I could use different white glass on the inside. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these away. I'm going to bring them downstairs to cut. And then I'm going to use this. And, and all I'm doing is making sure, see this is the top. 
this is the top for sure and it has like glue on it or something see how you can write on it with um sharpie it comes right off but this is a little more bumpy so i need to glue these underneath because i'm going to be cutting on this side because it's the flatter side i hope i hope i'm explaining that right um put these pieces up here but i kind of like this i'll use this for the outside so i might be able to get all of these on this piece no one two three four yeah so let me just decide if I'm in the shot all right so generally I would want the the edge to be on the edge it just makes it super easy and then this edge to be on that edge like that and then but you do have so when I cut I want to be able to go like this <clears throat> so there is a method to the madness really <clears throat> but that looks good I think I will go ahead and I mean I definitely feel like I'm wasting some glass maybe I'll do this different go up like that and down like this I think that'll be easier I'm gonna do that so I don't know if I'm explaining it right but you'll understand I don't know if you will all right so I'm gonna put the glue on the number side and adhere it to the up against the edge I'm not I'm trying not to press too hard with this but it, it's definitely a good glue stick so and then I'm just going to kind of, the edge of the glass is not perfectly straight, but I just want it as close as it can because then I'll grind it down. I'm going to just close this because there's a lot of glue on there. Then I'm going to put some glue on the number side again. And I expect to get all cut up because I move way too fast. I probably could have moved that over a bit, but I want to make sure I can get this area without mucking anything up. So I think that's going to be good. I'm going to do this one next. On the number side, and I know I'm almost out of the shot, but that's okay. You get the idea. So... I mean, I don't, I won't necessarily be cut up, but just the way I move and I know, like these edges can be very, very sharp. And I just don't tend to be careful. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm not scared. I have gotten really bad cuts too. When I was doing a mosaic one time, I was trying to get a piece off and I pulled my whole knuckle up like somehow I don't know but it healed I just stuck it back down and kept on working like I don't get that crazy over it so maybe that's why but it is silly all right so let me I'm just gonna mark these so 19 and 1 so this is 19 and 1 28 and 29 28 and 29 so I'm gonna go I'll meet you down in the basement and I'm going to show you how I cut this stuff. I'm not sure what kind of tripod I'm going to use. Maybe I'll shoot with this. Um, I might be able to, you know what, I'll probably take the camera off this tripod and I will put it on my little stand-up one. All right, so that's it for now. I'll be back with the next step. Thanks for watching.